Hello and welcome to Plainly Difficult. Today we'll be looking at The Strange Place of Crush, Texas. For better or for worse, you may know that I enjoy a good bizarre story about transport. Even though the great locomotive chase was only a couple of weeks ago, when I heard about this subject I just had to make it the next video. I've been known to spend too much time watching dashcam compilations. There's something quite cathartic about watching things crash into one another. Well obviously I'm not alone, as in 1896 around 40,000 people showed up to watch two trains crash into each other. It became known as the Crash at Crush. I'm being a little disingenuous as the actual crash wasn't named the Crush, but it was the temporary town set up for spectators and was for a short period of time the second largest city in Texas. The concept came from William George Crush, whom has a brilliant name for someone who set up a planned train crash. It was, believe it or not, a publicity stunt for the Missouri-Kansas-Texas Railroad, because nothing makes you want to travel on a train more than watching a train crash, right? In 1895, Crush, who was working as a passenger agent at the time, proposed to officials that the company stage a train wreck as an attraction. With plans to advertise the event months in advance, and although the event would be free, sell tickets to transport spectators aboard their own trains. Surprisingly, company officials agreed to finance the event, and it was planned it would take place on the 15th of September 1896. Crush selected a shallow valley just north of Waco for the location of the crash. Conveniently placed along the Dallas-Waco line, thus giving the railway company a virtual monopoly for providing the transport. At the start of September, construction works began on the four mile long crash track. Stands for spectators, three speakers stands, two telegraph offices, a stand for reporters and a bandstand. A restaurant was set up in a borrowed circus tent as well as a carnival with the usual late 19th century trappings. For example, games booths, medicine shows and soft drink vendors. Finally, a temporary station was constructed with a sign letting passengers know that they had arrived in Crush, Texas. Throughout the summer of 1896, adverts were seen all around Texas promoting the once in a lifetime spectacle of a monster crash. Due to this being such a bizarre event, many local newspapers carried the story as the crash site was prepared. The two locomotives selected were number 999 and number 1001, both considered old engines for the time. During the summer, both engines were toured around the state to raise interest in the crash at Crush. The company received more interest than originally intended, with the event overselling train tickets so much so that many passengers had to ride on the roofs of the carriages. This was part in due to the company selling train tickets at $2 for a round trip to anywhere within the state. On the 15th, the day had finally arrived. The anticipated 20,000 spectators actually numbered at 40,000. With a crash time of 3pm, much of the day was filled out with political speeches, picnics and general day out funness. By 3pm the crowd's excitement had reached fever pitch. Because of this many people had pushed too close to the track. The crash was pushed back to 5pm when the police managed to keep the crowd at an apparent safe distance. The two trains fully loaded up were set against one another reaching a speed of 45 miles per hour at the point of collision. Instantly a large explosion was heard sending debris into the crowd. One of the train's drive wheels was shot into the air. The carnage took the lives of three people and injured many others. The photographer who got these impressive pictures lost an eye to a stray bolt at the time of impact. By the evening, Crush Texas ceased to be, with the locomotives being broken down for scrap and souvenirs being picked out by parts of the crowd. Crush was immediately fired, although the event ended in tragedy, the railway insanely received no negative press and the day after, Crush was rehired, carrying on with the company until his retirement. The families of the victims were quickly paid off by the company with settlements and lifetime free travel on the railway. Now the only thing that's left to tell about the crash at Crush is a marker explaining the odd day in September 1896. Did you enjoy the video? I hope you did. If that's the case, leave a like and a comment below. New episodes are released every Thursday and the best way to see them is via subscription. You can help the channel grow by sharing videos with your friends and there's also a Patreon link down below if you fancy financially supporting the channel. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.